Yo, yo, yo. There you go. Got the sound happening. Yeah. Yo, check, check, you check. Oh, yes. yeah. Sounds good. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's up, man? How are you? Good? Yeah, good. I'm a bit blurry. Hold on. I got the shirt on, dude. I got the shirt on, man. <laughs> Let me just yeah. get this. My camera is blurring up, of course. Always, yeah, it's a little bit blurry. There you always go. a oh, technical problem when you um <laughs> when you do something important. <laughs> Don't you love it? Let me get this right. Sometimes this works. There we go. There we go. Turn my light up. <laughs> Thanks so much for doing this, man. No problem. Thank you. Rush shit in the house, man. <laughs> so be so fun. I'm so excited. Me too. I've me been too. wanting to like do something like this with um actually with like a lot of artists uh, artists that i know like local artists yeah and yeah. um and artists that that i see online and, and it's just so amazing that the first time i do it i get to do it with someone like you so thanks so oh, much come man. on man hey <laughs> thanks for the compliment <laughs> yeah well dude you're you're cool man all, all the stuff that you've been doing on youtube you know you're, you're making a name for yourself online and everything so congrats <laughs> and um it's a pleasure to be uh interviewed and on your show man so oh, thank man. you i appreciate it so much um yeah. what was i gonna say is the camera all right like that or would you prefer if it's the front on just because my i don't know what, what do you think let me, get my, you. let me get my space it's just there we go i want it to be more front on there okay okay it's just because my angle it's like just the stuff on my <laughs> table is like all busy and shit here so do you use like a light in front of you too or what, I'm what using, do you use yeah i'm using uh this light okay yeah yeah cool yeah i got a little light in front of me too yeah just because it's a bit, right. you know, it's a bit dark in here. Yeah, it gets dark. Um, it's it's a bit bright now because oh, oh, I went to show you the, <laughs> <laughs> I put the wrong thing. Here, let me just show you my room real quick. It's just like it's just like a I'm looking out to a nice, nice, and that's just the, the setup there. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, little stuff happening. Oh. I'm just on my laptop, so I got like my my thing right here. It's like connected to the laptop. Yeah, yeah. I should, I should get like a little webcam, huh? Yeah, the webcam's nice. It's, your your webcam looks fantastic. Um, it's quality. okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. I mean, I only got this because for the mobility. Because when I do lessons yeah, and yeah. stuff, sometimes I need to to twist the camera. And yeah, yeah. the thing, the way I'm filming now, it's like I got the screen cut in half so that I can. It's it's easy because you can't maneuver the laptop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Otherwise, you yeah that's look what I was at saying. <laughs> yeah, I just realized that right now too when you were moving around. I was like, oh damn, I need to get one of those too because mine just set right here on, on the laptop. Yeah, it's cool. Are you you're in the studio where you did your last video? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm in the um in the recording booth right now. I'm in the control room. Wow, nice. So this is like my little setup right here. I put like I just rearranged the desk and stuff, but oh, um over it. there is where I do uh see I got like a little window. There's like a little band rehearsal room over there. That's so mad. Is this a new place? Yeah, this is the new spot, man. I'm still trying to finish it up, but it's on its way. I love it. I love the wood and the, the design. It's so nice. Thanks, thanks. It's yeah. reused wood. I don't want to, I wanted to recycle, you know? Oh, nice. You made it look so stylish and arty. <laughs> thanks. That's mad. <laughs> yeah. Um, my idea for today was to sort of, um, you know, because R&B Singing Lessons is my channel and I want to get down to like what artists, how artists become the artists they are. You know oh, what I mean? shit. So it's like, I just kind of wanted to give you a vibe of what I was thinking of doing because I didn't really detail to you what we were going to do exactly, okay. you yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've always been really interested as, a, as someone who was like a beginner singer many years ago in what, what makes an artist an artist. And you know, when you look at an artist, you just think, wow, they're amazing, but you never think of, you know, what, what made that person the way they are? You know, did they read like, did they, did I have a mentor? Did they read things? Did they, yeah, were they yeah. naturally gifted or were they born into encouraging family or all this mm. kind of thing? So I guess I wanted to ask you questions about you and that kind Let's of way. Let's do it. And, That's um, cool, man. Yeah. And like do some vocal stuff as well, muck around with it. Yeah. 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 You know how it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So one, one of the things, it's not even a vocal question. Um, okay. Because I saw your Instagram yesterday, looking amazing yeah. with the abs and everything. <laughs> How do you keep in amazing shape? Happy birthday, by the way, thirty-eight, right? Thanks, man. Thank Are we recording already? Yeah, it's been recording from oh, the beginning. Oh, it's been. Re oh, I've been yeah. like saying bad words and everything. No, no, I can kind of play with it and okay. whatever. No, it's fine. Okay. If, if you do, if you're not comfortable with anything, I can muck around. Oh, with whatever. It, it's, yeah. it's all good. I just, yeah, it's up to you. 
But uh, oh, that's funny. You know, that's actually an old picture that I posted. Yeah, how old? <laughs> it's like a year or and a half ago or something oh, yeah. like that when we did that photo shoot. But um, you know, a lot of it, dude, is in that picture. I'm telling you, a lot of it is like Photoshop and and lighting. <laughs> but you know, you, you got to keep keep your fitness on, of course. Yeah. And luckily for me, um, I'm blessed with um, my mother and father's genes, and they're both very skinny. It's very hard for them to gain weight. Like, you know, us as a family, we can eat so much, but never gain any weight. Wow. Yeah. 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 But so, you got a, um, you got a great build with... though, too. Like your your muscles is a good build. So do you do you work out for your your shape? Yeah, I try to um, I try to work out. I was pointing over here at the band rehearsal earlier. I have like a little dance studio here too, where I put like a bench, and I try to go in there and just do some curls, you know, some some bench presses every day. I've been trying to go in. Um, well, I've been doing it for like a month now or something, maybe. Yeah. But before, you know, I used to I used to stay fit. You know, I used to be like a little uh, bench body model. You know. Yeah, because <laughs> in the but modeling. <laughs> when you were sorry modeling, say that again. Yeah, yeah. I used to do underwear modeling for bench. Underwear modeling. When I was younger, yeah, and like in my twenties. Oh, oh know, the, so. it's the brand is bench. Yeah, yeah, bench. Oh, okay. I thought you meant bench, like bench press. But yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So back then, you know, I used to work out a lot. And um, just recently, I just started getting back back into it again. Because yeah. uh, the Bakit Baba Baba um, video live on Wish Bus, you looked so tanked there. Is that what you're talking about? Face? <laughs> no, actually. Um, or before that? No, nah, that's just, just, just my regular build, you know, from, from <laughs> my parents. Like I said, it's the jeans. Like I wasn't even working out that much around that time. You know, and now I'm, I'm a little bit more, uh, I got a little more meat in me now compared yeah. to that video, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So I love what you said there because you got it as part of, it's like, it's it's in your lifestyle. You got it in the room, like where, yeah. you, you know, where you spend time and it's like, it's part of your, it's important enough that's right there, you know? For it's sure. You know, time, everything yeah. important enough is is here within my reach. Just like, like I was talking about, it's in the dance studio, right? So yeah, after I, I do like a, like a bench press, I'm like doing like a little dance move, you know, <laughs> just, just checking my moves, see if it's still fresh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they were fresh in the concert in Sydney. That was so good. <laughs> thank you. That thank was mad. You. So um, yeah. I was I was actually thinking to ask you about dancing too, because um, I'm a salsa dancer. I've been doing salsa dance oh, for like, cool. yeah, I used to do salsa dance shows, like where you do the samba drums and the girls would dance, what? and then you do like the couple dancing and you do the tricks. And I used to do it on like um, on boats, like for like a couple of hours, and I used to host the show, like make the jokes, get the people up to dance, that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you have any footage of that? You need to put that up. Ah, uh, I, I have some. It's like maybe five years old or something. But then I transition yeah, yeah. into like doing more music stuff. I'm sure but all I'm, your subscribers would want to see that, dude. I have bits and pieces of me doing salsa on my channel already. Yeah, so you can. You should react to yourself doing it <laughs> five years ago. <laughs> That's a mad idea. Me watching right? myself do salsa. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like, mm. I don't know about that move anymore. <laughs> That's a no, but idea. salsa is classic, though, right? It's like yeah, man, it never so goes fun. out of style. Yeah, yeah. It's so fun. It's it's a very social thing too. Me and my partner go. That's how me and my girlfriend met. We go every week, every Wednesday night. There's like a big salsa okay. event. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's live salsa. salsa music's amazing. Yeah, it's not so always live, but when it's live, it's it's a bonus too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, my sister actually back in the day when I used to do. Um, uh, I used to sing in a group with my sister and my uncles called the Howlers. We used to do um, some salsa stuff too, you know, because we used to be like this ballroom, ballroom dancing kind of a band. You know, we do like the top 40s and stuff like this. And, you know, there would be these these big Filipino crowds that would come in and just start like ballroom dancing, doing a swing, start salsa, start cha cha you know. Oh, man. We used to do all that kind of stuff. We used to sing like Mambo Number no. 5 and stuff, you know, ah, like stuff yeah. like that. I was going <laughs> to ask you, yeah, what did you sing? Yeah, yeah. Man. Back in the day, man, I used to sing um, Back at One a lot and uh, Bailamos. Bailamos. Yeah. <laughs> I used to sing all that. Let the um, rhythm take you over. Yeah, right? Enrique, <laughs> man. And uh, a lot of these, these 70s songs like Let's Groove Tonight and yeah. that was kind of, the, kind of the stuff that I did in, um, in Sydney. I yeah. did like a little like a seventies medley of like Earth, Wind and Fire. And yeah. I used to do all that stuff with my Uncle Bob and my my sister Jing. It was fun times, man. It was pretty much my training ground. Yeah, how old were you? When I started, it was too young because I wasn't even um, old enough to get in the club, right? I was like 17 band? years old. Yeah, so we used to just like dress me up like really old, make me look older, put like a really 
dress shirt on me, you know, <laughs> like this orange dress shirt with some slacks. And Not stuff. sneaky. Yeah, man. So, you know, I'm a little bit taller, so we were just we were just doing that. I was just singing and, you know, they weren't saying anything. So, okay, I'm, as long as they're not saying anything, I'm going to I'm going to make my money. I'm going to grind up in here and sing, you know, because this is my uh, my Hana Buhay in Tagalog. This is how I make a living. Hana Buhay. Yeah, Hana Buhay. So <laughs> that's interesting. Wow, I love it. So did they encourage <laughs> you? The, the it was your, Did you say your father and sister? Yeah, yeah, my my uncle and my sister uncle, we sorry, were in a yeah. band together called the Howlers, but my family was always encouraging me to sing, you know. Um to the point where they didn't even mind that I didn't finish my last year of high school, you know. They were like, "You know what? Pursue your dreams. We got you. It's it's fine. We support you. Just as long as you take your GED and you pass that fine, you're good." So I took my GED and I pursued my my dreams. But it's funny because um af- um what is that? A junior year after my junior year in high school, my parents let me do that. I was in a group called First Impression uh, with with Jimmy Muna and uh, my boys Alex Bakani, Mike Gabriel, and Owen Amaral. We were a cappella group called First Impression. I even have a, a tattoo. Wow. And we were doing our thing, right? We were we were singing and um, we were getting flown around everywhere. You know, we even got picked up like in limousines. Thanks to my boy Ray Brown, um, we got flown to New York to like go audition and, and sing in front of a uh, Def Jam, in front of Def Jam. Wow. But the thing back then, right? Back then there wasn't internet. So what we would do, we would send a CD and it was just our music and they would hear it and they would love it. They would fly us over. But when they saw us, it's like, what, you're Asian? Mm, that's a problem. No way. Yeah, and that happened so many times in, in LA and New York. You know, it was like, when they saw us, it was like, shoot, there's no, there's no market yet for, for Asians. We, we can't work with this. And then they would want to get me as solo, but you know, I was I was really um, I was faithful to my to my group. You know, I mean, these are my boys. I yeah. can't leave them. So we just kept going with that to the point where some of the band members, some of the group members, started getting married, and we were becoming um, a smaller group. That's that's when Chris Lawrence came in. He's another Filipino singer out here. Yeah, I know. Really dope. Shout out to my boy Chris. Yeah, but uh, that's when he came to first impression. And the thing with that thing, it's it's funny because my parents let me pursue that. And after a while, nothing was really happening. They were like, okay, uh, what's happening with your music? You need to go back to school. All right, you need to go back. So I went to uh, DeVry and I, and I, and I took uh, computer engineering for like a semester, right? And then I was up in there going to school. And, you know, I, I don't mean to be a bad influence on kids, but <laughs> I just can't do classrooms, you know what I'm saying? So I was there, I was studying. <laughs> You know, I mean, if if I really had to, you know, I'd probably pursue that because I do kind of have a passion in, in computer technology as well. But What age but, is this that you went back for this, computer engineering? This is 20, 21 years old. Yeah, I mean, we wouldn't call them quick. We wouldn't call them kids. 21. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, <laughs> I it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And my parents were like, what's happening with your music? You got to go back to school. You got to go back. And um, my uncle, my uncle was all like, you know what? My, my, my different uncle, he's also a musician too, but he was talking to me, he was like, you know what? There's really nothing happening with your music. You have to go back to school. And it's funny because that's what really motivated me. Like, oh man, nothing's happening. Okay, fine. I'm going to show all of you. I'm going to show all of you. But I still, you know, I still obey them. So I went to school. But that's what really, what really got me. It was like, man, I got to go to school. And when like, I really want to focus on my passion. So I just really, I just went on like fifth gear on my passion and singing. And I just like finished this album out there. I just started like writing. I started um, meeting up with like different producers and my, my partner Ray Brown hooked me up with all this great music. My first album, we finished Game Face. And that was kind of like the turning point of everything. Yeah, right? Because at that point I was kind of fed up with the American market because you know, uh, it, I was being rejected for how many years now? Yeah. So um, we shopped it a little bit, but it was pretty much the same thing. But when it got to the Philippines through my Tita Jeline Eugenio, shout out to Tita Jeline, the legend. Um, she brought it here to Universal Records and they loved it. So they flew me out here for a meeting. And while I was out here, uh, GMA Network, the TV network, they loved me too. So they're like, you know what, network deal. And I got a record deal. So I was, I was okay, I'm gonna move to the Philippines. I'm gonna start my career. Wow. Let's go. Yeah. Wow. What a story. Thanks, man. That, thanks for sharing <laughs> that. That was really inspirational too. 
So I was trying to make it quick, you know. I know we don't we don't have a lot of time. No, well, that was that was really quick. You're telling the life story apparently like that. <laughs> 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 this is how I became famous in five minutes, Jr. <laughs> That's amazing. So it's weird, bro, because bro, you're like accepted but rejected. Do you know what I mean? In the in the like the Def Jam and American sort of thing that you were saying, it's like yeah, a weird yeah. feeling, right? When you get someone loves you. It, I I don't know what it's called. Like uh, they say, there's no market. It's so weird because all the new things, like the way people get popular and stuff, it's by things changing, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, it's true. It's like, but the voice, like, you, <laughs> like, what does the look have to? Oh, I just I'm just getting shocked. Like I read your, I read the Wikipedia stuff about you, and. Uh -huh. um, I, I, I don't think that was in there. So it's just, it's amazing just to, oh, yeah, yeah. Just to hear it from no, your mouth, you know, and how you, you express the story. And thanks so much for sharing that. Like you, you, you shared a lot of things that I already had written down here to ask. <laughs> you work, <laughs> actually, I've been trying to, um, like a lot of this, I don't really um, mention in interviews and I've done a bunch of interviews here in the Philippines. And for some reason, like that doesn't really come out. But, um, and I've been thinking about that lately. And I was like, you know what? I should, I should probably like tell this story. And it's perfect that, you called me, you, you texted yeah. me and you wanted to do this. So Context. now I have a thank hey. you to, yeah. Yeah, time, everything. It's like different times to tell different stories, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. So would, when you were with First Impressions, what kind of stuff were you singing? Oh, man, we were doing a bunch of acapella stuff, beatbox. We would we would start off with an acapella and then all of a sudden it would, and then we would beatbox with acapella, right? And all of a sudden we'd be walking to to our musical instruments. Yeah. The first one would be the beatboxer. So then he would transition beatboxing and slowly adding the, the drum set. And all of a sudden I'm on I'm on the bass and I'm like, I'm playing like the bass while singing like this acapella part. And then the keyboards come in, Chris Lawrence, and then the uh, guitar comes in and Owen, whatever. And then we would switch to um, another original song that we have, you know. So we would do a lot of original songs when we were first impression. And we would go to around like the college circuits. We would go to like um, San Diego and a lot in L.A. and Michigan. We would just be doing a bunch of high schools and colleges. It, it was a fun time. Wow. That, that was a lot of my training ground as well because they showed me how to um, really do original music, you know, like how the importance of an original song is as an artist. You know, they, they showed me how to like, we were we were recording on eight tracks of like like the first digital eight track recorders we were recording on that and making even though it didn't sound that great we were we were doing it and they were yeah. showing me that and that's how wow. i learned wow and that that leads into one of my questions actually um about writing like uh, what's your process for writing and recording a song yeah it's different um you know it's it's really just inspiration and, and experience, right? Because uh, there's different ways to attack writing. I mean, you could do writing through lyrics, you can do it through melody, you can do it through an instrument, like a melody on, on, on a piano or like not in, especially now with all these synth sounds, it's like amazing just the technology when you combine the music, you can create such beautiful sounds, you know? So um, it's, it's really different, um, like for me, um, it's pretty b broad spectrum because I produce music as well too. So just making a sound is part of my writing process, you know, like one day I'll just, I'll just think of like a, a, li a little, um, like I'll make a, a kick sound and a snare sound and, and that's it, you know, but I'll get back to it and I'll use it later, you know, stuff like that. Mad. So you're really into the production side. I love the production side. I'm, I'm really focused on the production side right now, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been really busy as as an artist, as JR, you know, performing and this and that. And I've always wanted to get back to my my production side because it's a passion for mine to to write for other artists, to make songs for other artists and stuff, you know. And what I like about it, it's the chemistry, the the um, collaboration, uh, the whole process of it, of just like uh, growing with this other artist because you, you learn so much from from working with different people. Mm. And for me, you know, you never stop growing, you never stop learning. And that's what I want to keep doing, keep elevating. And it, it's been an amazing ride just just meeting new artists and working with them. Like uh, I'm working right now with uh, my niece, DJ. We, we, she's like evolving as an artist. 
and we we created this song in Tagalog. It's called Natutuna. It's called like I'm melting. You know, it's a love song. Love that. And it's just it's just so fun when you're mixing the when I'm mixing it and you're getting the sound that you want and, and she sounds so great on it. It's like, it's so fulfilling. And then I'm working with this other artist. Um, uh Oh, it says my connection isn't stable. There we go. We're yeah, back. Yeah. It froze for a bit on who you were going like this, but then it came back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're working with another So I'm artist. working with this other artist, Ilona Garcia, and she is so amazing. Oh my gosh. Like hands down to this girl. Shout out Ilona. Um, she's an she's only 17 years old she's writing amazing melodies and lyrics and i'm producing these tracks for her she's actually giving me like a sound she's kind of like dictating the whole thing and i and i come in as a producer to kind of put her her vision to life yeah and w this chemistry that we're going through and i i, I love it because i'm learning so much from this 17 year old girl she's like half my age i mean she's half my age yeah exactly so but you know, I'm learning from a 17 year old, you know, and that's what's amazing about music. Were you just doing your maths just then? The 38, yeah, 17. yeah. <laughs> Plus, I realized I was I'm talking so much. So I was like, okay, maybe I should let. No uh, way. I, I love it. I love it. You're so, you're so talkative. You're like me. That's why my reactions are so long. <laughs> and I'm not even talking to anyone. I'm talking to myself. Yeah, right. Everyone, yeah. You're crazy. No, I love it. I love it. Keep, yeah, keep it up. Um, I love to hear what you're passionate about and, and I'm feeling your energy, man. It's it's amazing. You said Elevate. Cool, now, cool. Is Elevate one of your old songs or an album name? Yeah, yeah. I don't have all that your past last stuff album. yet, but yeah. It was, yeah, last it was my album. last, last album before the album before that you're wearing right up? now. Yeah. Yeah, it's called Elevated. Yeah, Elevated. Okay, yeah. yeah. I need to check yeah, out yeah. your some of your previous stuff because I've only... Because I'm like an obsessive listener. Once I listen to like an album or something, I just listen to it over and over and over. <laughs> so it takes a while before I'm ready to like listen to a new album. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm the same yeah. way. I'm You're the, the same? same way. Yeah, I don't know why. Exactly I just like to repeat way. it until it's like internalized or something. Right, it's, yeah, right. It's like, I feel like I can connect more when I hear the song several times. So then when I hear it again, maybe a few months down the track, I'm like, I'm, I'm in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I know how every bit goes. Yeah. And, <laughs> uh. and, you know, you transformed me because I never listened to another language that was R&B style. I don't listen to, I'm, I'm Lebanese background, so I listened to Lebanese growing up. But I mostly knew what the words meant and everything. So it was my first time listening to another language, uh, Tag Tagalog, yeah. without understanding it, but fully like listening to it over and over. So it's, a, it's an interesting experience, you know? I mean, That's like, so cool. Man. Mumbling words that, that like don't make any sense. <laughs> but, but like, you know, well, what is it that, that you got attracted to? I mean, was it the melody? Was it the, the, the language or? Everything about your voice and the production, like the, the production sounds, the way it sounds. And um, your, your vocals, I'm very usually obsessed with people's vocals. But then I also realized that I, I'm drawn to particular kinds of writing, like mel melodic writing. So um, I noticed there was some artists that I really love that did a few tracks, maybe other people wrote for them or something like that. And I noticed I didn't love the song that, I didn't like listening to it that much, which is what made me realize that it's not just the voice that I love. It's actually the voice, the song, the production. It's, it's the mix of everything. Mm. And that happened with yours, like the language almost it wasn't it's not even like a player in the game almost we have that connection because we we're like 90s kids you know we, we listen to that kind of r&b and yeah that's our style you know yeah and i think that's why it's like when you hear when i do a run and you try to do it it's like you can do it because it's like it's we have the same influence you know yeah <laughs> which gets on to what i was going to ask you as well um who's your influences so you had first well, impressions but before that Oh, yeah, was it know, before my that? number one influence for sure is my family, dude. My family has been like singing, like I hear them sing since I was born, you know, and there's music all around me all the time when I'm with my family because there's so much of us, my, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, my sisters, my brothers, my, my mom and dad, you know, everyone's musical and they're really good at it too. It's not like just some regular stuff, you know, they're like wow. really good. So they, they majorly influenced me. So... Um, but, you know, on an international level, you know, for sure, Brian McKnight, man, and, and Boys to Men. There's, back in the day, Tevin Campbell and, 
and Donnell Jones and Blackstreet, Stevie Wonder, Luther Vandross, James Ingram, rest in peace. Um, even like uh, Aretha, no, not Aretha, not much, but um, what's her name? Um, uh, shoot. You I forgot the old name. One. Taylor Dane. I used to listen to Taylor Dane all the time. And Is uh, that a, I haven't heard that one. Is that a guy or a girl? Yeah, she's a girl. Uh, smoke gets in your eyes. I used to put that on repeat all the time. Um, but in in uh, Filipino in the Filipino world, I used to listen to Gary V all the time. He he was and Leia Solonga. Yeah, those are the two that I used to listen to all the time. Regine Velasquez, you know, these are like kind of like the big names when I was growing up in the states. And it's crazy because you know there was an internet back then, and I used to just like hear of them still. And that's why I was so intrigued. I was like, wow, these, ah. these Filipino singers, they're amazing. You know, I used to gravitate towards that. Wow, nice. Do you have like a particular a voice that you would have wanted to sound like? Yeah, you know, I forgot to mention Usher. Usher was a major influence on me. You know, I used to want to sound like Usher all the time. And- yeah, man, actually your voice. Yeah, it really, because you got the low, when Usher talks, it's very similar to your to your deep <laughs> deepness, your, your bass and your voice. And he's got that falsetto thing happening, you know? Yeah, and he's, yeah. got, he's also quite high too. So yeah, it actually makes Usher, sense. Man. Yeah, all day. Your, voice, your voice, yeah, has that. Because, you, you know, I think sometimes we gravitate towards artists that have a similar vocal, like a uh, range yeah. or whatever, like to us. Like the Tim, timber, is that what we call it? Yeah. Timber? Yeah, timber, yeah, the yeah. tone. Um, so, like, I, I gravitated originally to, like, Craig David. Um, Craig David. Because I noticed my range, everything was, was similar. I'm not exactly the same. You know, your voice is never uh-huh. exactly like another artist's, like, yeah, range, yeah. etc. Like, I gravitated there, like, Cisco, Drew Hill. Oh, um, man, Drew today. Hill. Yeah. Yes. Tank. Um, you know that I like it when you call me. Uh, you yeah, I love that. that all the time. When I, when I kill it, mommy, Puerto Rican, right? I see the way. Yeah, it's so hot. Cisco like, blew my mind back then, you know? Mm-hmm. Incomplete, Killing all those it. tracks. But yeah, I, maybe, I think maybe we gravitate towards that, like, initially or something, you know? Yeah. I miss that kind of music, you know? Yeah. I wish they would do more like that. I mean, they they kind of bringing it back now with the remakes and stuff. You know, Chris Brown got that. Doo, 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 doo. That was, man, that came out when I was like in fifth grade or something like that. And everyone Which, was jamming to that. But they, they keep bringing back these old songs. And mm. it's kind of cool because that's that's our era. Yeah. And I loved, I loved your album because it was like, man, this is like new R&B. It's so hot. <laughs> You know, and, thanks, and it didn't thanks. sound old. You know, it didn't sound like early '90s or something. It just sounded like its own new thing, and I, I love I that. You know, because you know, some people say bring this back, bring this back, but it's like, well, you can never really bring something exactly back. You yeah. know, because people are always evolving, and you just want people to make something maybe that has a similar f- similar flavors, but not exactly the same necessarily. You right. know, because how can right. it be exactly the same? So that's why I really appreciated your album. Every track, bro. I'm not just saying it. Like uh, I love you know hearing I mean? that. Every uh. track for like two weeks was on just replay, just replay, you know? Um, oh, man. And, and I don't even speak the language. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you definitely, like, so cool. you showed me, man, like the R&B artists are killing it and they're not just recycling stuff. The and you, you didn't just like do different kinds of sounds completely like trap or, or EDM or something. You you yeah. literally made it. Yeah. So I'm talking it up there, but I really, really love that. <laughs> really I'm looking forward. I love to, it, man. I love it. I'm looking forward and, to um, listening oh, to your older yeah. ones too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Elevated. Check it out. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I've, I've come out with like seven albums already. Yeah. And um, I remember my first couple albums. I was like, man, is Philippines going to be ready for this? Because... You know, even back then when I was 21 years old, I was like, this is a little bit uh, ahead of Philippines time, you know. So uh, when you listen to it, I mean, it's you can tell it, it's in like the early 2000s that's recorded. But you know, what? I, I think it could still uh, stay up to par for uh, with the with the sound. Game today. face. Game face. Yeah. And I will also have another one, a self-titled JR. Yep. That came out the first two albums. Yeah. I'm going to check them all out, bro. I'm going to check them all for out. For sure. Um, Thanks. And I'm going to message you as well. Hey, man, listening to this, 
<laughs> in love with this or whatever, yeah. whatever I'm feeling. Hey, man, I don't like this one. Nah, Jax. <laughs> you got you to change this one. <laughs> That's just, the best feedback right there. Though. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any vocal mentors? Did you ever have a time when someone said to you, hey, dude, do this with your voice. Or, this is right. This is wrong. Anything like that? Yeah. Um, growing up as a kid was my sister, Jing. She would teach me how to riff, how to do vibrato, how to sustain my my notes. And then my mom used to give me um, ginger to, raw ginger to eat all the time. She'd be like, eat this. This is good for your voice. I was like, what? It's, it's like, it's so spicy, you know? It's like, <laughs> just eat it. It's good for your voice. All right, okay. Don't just swallow it. Suck on it. How much? Like, suck all that juice out. Like this much of, of ginger. Is oh, like, damn. Eat it. You know, so, but now it's like, I love ginger, you know, I'll, I'll just eat ginger now. And I just always remember my mom, my mom saying, it's good for your voice. It's good for your voice. I don't even know if it's true, but you know what? Whatever. It's a placebo effect, right? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so how but old were you up, when Jing was teaching you? I was like, I was like, oh man, young, like maybe like eight to um, Damn. 16 or something like that she would teach me. And then after that, um, I kind of stopped because I went through puberty and um, from me singing Mariah Carey songs, whistling and everything like that, like without, without breaking a sweat, like range, like all the way up there. Right. Wow. After I hit puberty, I couldn't sing at anything at all. Like I remember doing a show going through puberty and there was like, you know, at the time, like a thousand people, that's like a freaking stadium to me. You know what I mean? So I was like, um, 16 years old and I was singing in front of them all of a sudden I cracked and on stage I said the F word I was like oh fuck <laughs> and then, I was like oh excuse me and I went back to my mom was like why did you say bad word on <laughs> because like, I cracked mom <laughs> yeah right. it's embarrassing so I got discouraged of that I got discouraged so I stopped my mom was like you know what never do that she, she would train me she's like even though if you crack just keep going don't, don't, don't let them see that you messed up you know she was constantly training me same with my sister. But after that, when I came back finally to singing, it was around first impression, around 18 years old. I finally came back to it. And then Chris Lawrence was a major influence on me because he had such a higher range than me. And I was like, why does this guy have a higher range than me? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, w I want that high range too. So, you know, we, we started singing together and I guess we would pick up each other's tips because, you know, like, my riffing capability, like he started picking up as well too. And ah. I started getting like a higher range. So he, like Chris was a major influence in my singing as well. Oh, nice. So that explains like the synergy I felt when I watched your your guys um, performance. Um, wherever you right go, whatever waiting. you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was yeah. like, damn, those guys are in sync, <laughs> man. Like, yeah. So that explains <laughs> it. You guys sang a lot together. Before. Yeah, yeah since I was like 20 years old, man. People told me like um, commenters and stuff. Yeah. Was, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Commenters told me you guys were friends and stuff. But um, but that, ex that adds to the story that you bounce off each other and learn off each other as well. I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You're so lucky that you had that. And thanks so much for telling me, you know, because when, when you just watch someone, th the, the common thing to think is, oh, they're talented. I'll never be like that. They're talented. <laughs> they're gifted. You know, they're just, <laughs> and then here you are telling me, you know, your sister was teaching you riffs, teaching you vibrato, teaching you sustaining notes. I remembered everything you said there. Yeah, because you have it, a good memory. Because it clicks with me, because those things are so important, you know, like sustaining a note. There's the difference between singing and speaking. You know, like when we speak, we don't sustain anything. We just, everything's mm. like, ba, 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 ba. but when you yeah. sing, the, the thing that makes you look like you're singing is being able to just hold a note right yeah right yeah. yeah and then the vibrato adds the extra effect so it's not just all still tones or straight tones and then yeah, the runs yeah. add an exciting effect because it's fast it's like hey exactly. check this out not only can i hold a note not only can i do a vibrato effect on a note but i can do notes blazing fast right so, and you just said them she told me how to riff she told me how to vibrato she told me how to you know <laughs> like these are like the most standout things you know that make an artist mm. sound um intermediate-ish to advanced slash expert you know what i mean so you're in that expert zone when you're doing vibrato when you can hold notes when you can do really fast runs and then you know you got the production side and the writing side as well which is a whole other level and the mindset and you're so lucky you know for your mom to tell you 
cracking is so embarrassing, isn't yeah, it? It is. It's so it embarrassing. Is. I mean, like you don't know how much crap I get on YouTube if I put up a cover and and there's like not even maybe oh, a no. full not even a full crack, but just maybe a little crack or or about yeah, to, yeah. or about to crack, you know, when the note doesn't sound yeah. quite strong. And I'm like you know, you can easily fall into that. Oh, you know, oh, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm gonna, you know, yeah. I'm gonna throw the towel in. I don't want to perform anymore. I don't want to. And I'm like, exactly. hey. Then I learned this is the best I can do right now. You know, this is me now. So I'm just gonna own it. You know, and if I need to crack 20 times before I learn how to do a note without cracking, and those 20 times happen to be maybe on stage or in front of an audience, like that's part of the process. Then that's part of the process. Yeah, it's a mindset. You're right. It's, mindset. it's a mindset because yeah. you could be the most talented performer, artist, but if your mindset is wrong, you're not going to go anywhere. Yeah, I love they said that, and I love how you had the. There's one of my questions here. I got the questions here. Um, have <laughs> Have you had struggles amongst your success? And you know that to me sound like a typical that struggle story. Look, you know, I wanted to stop for these few years kind of thing yeah 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 so i love that but you know after um after my stuff started popping off like the game face album you know um it's it's a really sh it's a real struggle because it's hard to top a hit song but you know it's like how do you do better than that it's it's really hard and i've been trying it's but you know it doesn't discourage me because you know um like i'm different as an artist 17 years ago oh, what yeah, it's, oh, 16, 17 years ago. Yeah, when I started. Wow. It feels weird, right? When you say it like that. Yeah. Like our age, because our age is similar. Yeah. <laughs> it's like half our age, man. So <laughs> I'm, I'm different now, you know, and I'm, I'm satisfied with the music that I make. It's different from what I was doing before. But, and, you know, maybe someday I could, I could do another hit like Bakit Baba too. But, you know, my, my music has changed already from them. And yeah. I still do that song. I love that song and I appreciate it. And I would never, ever grow tired of that song, ever. I perform it at every per performance to the day I die, you know. But I would love to make another song that, that can yeah. top that, yeah. you know. You know, I would say just from the Kamustaka album, like that to me, it's it's hard when you say a song to top another song because songs all feel different and they fit different moods. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like you can say how much um, how much sales a song got or how popular it got and how much people wanted you to sing it in concerts and stuff. But to me, like all the songs on that album, they have their own thing about them. Like the one you did with Mika, is that, is that right how I said it, Mika? Yeah, yeah, Mika, yeah. you're right. Exclusivo. I loved, I loved it, the mood. <laughs> just the movie Thank I was you. like man they killed it on this track like it was so different and unique and and the slow jam the kabilang dako and um the bini bini all the like uh, they, yeah. all, they all have their own vibes you know so i would mm -hmm. say i wouldn't say that you're not topping like bakit baba or any previous success you've had i just say maybe it just doesn't it just doesn't um get as popular but I might not be. I appreciate that. I might you know, not I be right that. in what I'm saying, but I enjoy listening no, to it know, the same level. You know, that's what I mean. I feel you. I totally feel you because you're an artist also, and you know, you know what I'm feeling, and I totally feel what you're talking about. But it's kind of hard to gauge because you know we see uh, we see Chris Brown's on 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 the radio, we see Bruno Mars on the radio, and it's like hit after hit after hit. You know, and it's yeah. like you idolize these kind of people, and you yeah. want to be like them, and. You know that that's what I want to do. You know, I want to I want to make a hit after hit, but it's really hard. You know, I mean, th there's really an art to to marketing as well. You know, yeah. it's not just the music. It's there's a, sure. there's so many aspects to it. And like I said, I'm always learning and I'm always growing. And I'm here. I'm never going to stop. You know, it's this is what I love. Based, I love it, man. Um, <laughs> and then we look here. Uh... So you talked about a lot of this stuff. I'll just, I'll just, spit, I'll just spit these out to you. You know, um, you, uh, what music are you listening to? Right now, I've been listening a lot to um, her. H dot e mm. dot r. Yeah, yeah, man, she's she's crazy. Um, she's actually uh, half Filipina, half black, okay. and she's an amazing writer. And like her music, it's such 
right up my alley because her R&B, it's so just suave and laid back, but she's really saying something with her lyrics. It's not just, you know, usually R&B is about lust and it's about yeah. love, you know, love. Hers, it's about, yeah, it's about love also, but in a clever way, it's different, you know. So I've been kind of like studying that sound and that's nice. kind of like what I'm trying to do for Ilona as well, too. It's kind of like that sound for of her. And I've been listening a lot to FKJ, Fresh uh, Fresh Kiwi Juice. They're this, uh, he's this instrumentalist. It's kind of like R&B-ish type stuff. It's pretty cool, man. Mad. You should check it out. I'll, yeah, I will. I loved your description. Suave and laid back r and That's mad. <laughs> That's mad. That's so you. Uh, not on every track, but you know, on, on a lot of the tracks. Do you have any vocal mentors who said that? When did you start singing? Did you start around yeah. eight or earlier? No, earlier, man. Um, but I remember my first gig was for a, a pageant for little kids. And I was like around, yeah, like around eight years old. Um, I sang Unchained Melody. Did you say your and first gig? Getting, yeah, it was my first gig because I got paid. I got paid $100. Bro, go eight years old. Unchained yeah, that was like the biggest check that I ever got too, until like maybe 22 years old <laughs> for wow. singing. Because, you know, I remember getting paid with my uncle's band. I was, we were getting paid like like $60, you know. We would do three sets and I'd be over there lugging the big ass speakers and the, the mixers and wiring everything up and then taking it down, taking off all the wires, taking off of the speakers, putting in the truck. Grinding. And then going back home and then unloading it into the garage and we get paid 60 bucks. But at at eight years old, I got paid a hundred for the one song. <laughs> one song. <laughs> I bet you were heaps when cute. Oh yeah, um, I think my parents have a video of it, but it's like lost now. Oh. I remember they were like, in their dresses and I was serenading like these pageant little girls. There was like maybe six of them and I was going to them <laughs> singing Unchained Melody. Like, Whoa, my love. <laughs> oh yeah. Hit me with a little bit of the falsetto from that. <laughs> love. <laughs> but um i think even before that i was singing because um, my mom used to tell me to copy michael jackson all the time just um as a oh, michael like, jackson yeah i don't know like i don't maybe like three years old or something I'm not Mad. sure so yeah, very i think young. i came out the womb singing you know I, I don't i'm not even sure <laughs> so as soon as speech was possible <laughs> singing <laughs> right? was happening <laughs> as soon as the sounds was possible out of my mouth <laughs> <laughs> like ah ah ah, <laughs> you had a vibrato already. Right? <laughs> she would dance crying right there. She would know what you needed by the kind of a uh, run you would do while you're crying, or that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that means milk. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, when did singing become your career? Mm, you kind of answered it. Well, you know, I guess I would consider it my career when I was finally sustaining myself, which was at the age of 22 years old. Okay. So I was pretty much living on my own at 22, singing. And that's when I moved to the Philippines. So um, I had a show that I was doing on TV every week, every Sunday, it was called SOP. It was the number one show in the Philippines. It was on the opposite network that I've been working on with now, GMA. And that was pretty much my work. And while I was doing that, I put out Bakit Baba. First, I put out Design for Love and Bakit Baba, my two singles. And while doing SOP, it was like this great combination because they would love my song, hearing it on the radio, and then they would see me singing every Sunday on TV. So it kind of like was this perfect combination of marketing for me at the time. Mm. And that's when I started getting all the gigs. You know, I, I would they would fly me all over to the Philippines to um, to sing. You know, first it started off at little bars and stuff like this. And I would go out, I would sing, I would do my sets. And then it would be like for events, for bigger companies. And then all of a sudden, like all out of the world, you know, doing world tours. And next thing you know, I'm just like, you know, just making a living off singing and just loving every minute of it. Wow. How big were the crowds mm. that you sing to? Well, um, you know, at first when I was in the bars, you know, they, the bars would fill up. I mean the capacity would be like sometimes like you know 80 people but like 300 people would be there you know <laughs> but, i want to um, hear this kid sing <laughs> i can know at the time you know no one's seen anyone like me yet so mm. you know it was a little bit new and everyone was trying to get a glimpse of it 
So from the bars, I would move up to, um, you know, like my first concert was uh, was at the Folks Arts, Folk Arts Theater. Um, that was like 8,000 people that Whoa. was over there. Yeah, yeah. And then I started doing bigger venues. Like the last one I did in Dubai was like 60,000 people. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I can't so, imagine. I've never done anything like that, man. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. But, you know, like we would do like Araneta is like 20,000 and that's kind of like a normal coliseum for us out here. It's like 20,000. Normal. normal. I'll, I'll, I'll put these on the I normal. Mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In your world. Like, like, <laughs> a little more is I think it's like 25, 30,000, you know, but you know, we would do, we would do these kinds of venues and, but it's not like those, those are the venues that we do all the time. You yeah. know, I mean, I'm still doing venues where there's like a hundred people. And those are actually the venues that are, that are more nerve wracking when this is like so intimate and yeah. they're like face to face with you just looking at you and it's so raw, you know? Yeah. At least when it's like a, a sea of people, 60,000, you know, everyone is, is excited and everyone's feeling each other's energy. So, you know, there's, a, there's more mm -hmm. of an applause, you know, and you could feel that and you, you, you go with that, but okay. when it's a hundred people, you got to work for that. You know, you got to work for that applause. Ah, you know, interesting. You got to really like do something to really get that energy out of them at first. Cause you know, it's real, real timid at first, you know, they're just trying to feel you out. It's interesting. Yeah. I've only ever done the small venues, like when I was doing dance shows and when I used to do some singing shows as well, when I was uh -huh. a teacher as well in school, there was a lot of performances and you'd perform a lot for your classes, like bits and pieces and show them back when I wasn't that good, but you would feel uh, that, you know, cause you can see everyone's face. It's so, it's <laughs> yeah, so exactly. different, right? It's like, oh, it's scary, mm -hmm. especially like uh, auditions for shows and stuff like that. It's just you and two people, two judges or two <laughs> producers. It's like, whoa, it's scary, man. It's so yeah. Different. yeah. It's funny because there's that awkwardness as an artist and as an audience, right? When mm -hmm. it's an intimate crowd like that, because yeah. as an artist, you're you're supposed to sing to the crowd. You're supposed to make eye contact. You're supposed to exude that energy so they can take it in right but at the same time it's like you've never met these people before so there's an awkwardness mm. with that alone but you, you also see that as an audience because sometimes when when i'm trying to sing to someone you can tell like you know they're like kind of like shy and they're awkward <laughs> and they don't, they don't know where to look they're like you know yeah so that back and forth so you really have to gain that trust mm. you really have to make a connection where it's like where you can look them in the eye and just like oh i'm, I'm feeling this you know yeah it's, it's, it's so good and when you, you know, did that in Sydney, I was just like, wow, man, he knows how to work the audience and make, <laughs> make everyone comfortable. Everyone, uh, I think some people saw some of the footage I might have put. People were like hugging you. I've never been to a concert like that. It was so amazing. <laughs> You're like singing, yeah, it's, jumping it's up on a, or jumping up in between the crowd. It's like the stage, you got the stage and you're coming into the crowd. It was so, I loved how you did it. I was like, <laughs> man, this dude, this dude's personal yeah you know yeah. you gotta you gotta earn that respect and that energy back i loved mm -hmm. it i loved it um i think oh yeah one other thing what's up do you do you have hobbies outside of your music yeah um recently i've i like to bike around my neighborhood i like to um oh, yeah? my pack of dogs and just go around the neighborhood and just you know just get some exercise and I, I, I like it when they're following me. I could hear their their nails just like clawing on the on the concrete, following me. Like, um, a, like what kind of bike? I have a little mountain bike that I bought. Oh yeah. And what what else? I like to play basketball sometimes. Oh, but recently, I love basketball. Lately, it's kind. Of, oh, um, I got a switch. That I've been playing Smash Brothers a lot, just trying to practice. Cause it's like real competitive when you're playing my, my friends it's like you know you got to be the best <laughs> <laughs> smash brothers um what else do i like to do uh i mean i've, I've been watching a lot of joe rogan <laughs> oh yeah on YouTube. yeah joe rogan he's he's freaking crazy man that guy what topics so yeah like? i mean i guess that's that's a hobby i mean podcast 100 yeah. percent. yeah i watch youtube a lot like i watch like a ted talks and all random stuff drama yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever okay some yeah. drama too uh, on youtube oh yeah like um i'm vegan so there's a lot of like vegan drama <laughs> um okay. just all, all uh, kinds of stuff all kinds of interesting stuff um you're vegan as well oh uh, yeah since um ne nearly eight years now i think yeah oh yeah cool. yeah i got into it a while ago right. for a few reasons um to help with my migraines and um and then i it didn't fully help with it but then i just ended up enjoying it 
and um, liking liking the, like the ethical side of it as well, and the taste side. So yeah, I stuck with it. So it's nice. Yeah, yeah I heard about that. That must be hard for you to sing with, with the migraines. Oh, the migraines. Yeah. Because um, there's a lot of pressure in in this like upper area when yeah. you're singing. Yeah. Well, I I stopped doing shows because of because of it because you know when you get it, it's it's hard to if you have a show, it's hard to drop everything and say oh, I got a migraine. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not fair yeah, for like the for sure. people you're working for. So I decided, you know, if I'm going to do music and stuff, I'll have to do it in a way that where I can control it and it doesn't really affect anyone negatively. So I yeah, stick yeah. to the, the YouTube side because, you know, That's I can, tough. Yeah, I can do singing on YouTube and put it up whenever I want. And if I'm not well, I don't have to. And if I have lessons, I can cancel and it's only on one person. It's not too big of a deal. They can just reschedule and do another day. So, I was watching um, that song that you did, The Greatest Showman. Um, what, what was the title never of that enough. again? Yeah, Never Enough. You yeah. did a great job, by the way. Thank you, It was man. really good. But I was thinking about that while you were holding those long notes. And I was like, oh, man, I hope you know he doesn't get a migraine after this. Because <laughs> I know about that, you know? And, You're and funny. There's one, one thing, too, where you were like holding a note and you were like this. And I was like, oh, no, he might be oh, getting no. a migraine. <laughs> He's got a migraine now. <laughs> <laughs> you did like a little gesture, like going, ah. And I was like, oh, yeah. shoot, a What that really meant was, oh, I didn't expect it's going to be this long. Because, <laughs> like, I learned the song in three days. Um, oh, wow. When, yeah, when I'm walking home, um, I, brought, I watched it with my brother. And I, like, really cried when I heard that song. And it really hit me, the movie. And, um, and then a few days later, the song came up somehow. And I was like, you know, I want to step out of my box. I've been thinking for a while to do, like, some musical songs just to change my change it up a bit you know because musical songs have a bit of a different feel than the normal stuff that i was already singing and they usually right. have a bit of a big impact i go if that song can make me cry like that that means it's got a big impact and i want to learn to create that impact in my own voice yeah. so i was like when i walk home yeah. that's when i listen to music and um, yeah, when i, I walk home that. from I work you were doing that with, with my my album yeah that yeah that's cool yeah yeah so when i'm walking home i listen and so that's when i kind of learnt it so like it takes about 20 minutes to walk home so over three days i walked home listening and then i did one session at home where i practiced properly and like loudly and like broke down all the the high notes and the holds and everything yeah. and, and then i did that cover so it was really fun and yeah. it came out pretty good it came out pretty good it's um, hard memorizing songs isn't it when it's new yeah it's like when you haven't listened to a song you know dozens of times like like we have with a lot of songs that we know you know yeah. older songs it's like it's a different process to learn it quickly like in a couple of days because we got we we know so many songs we know so many lyrics and we only have so many terabytes of it or I mean, <laughs> terabytes. I mean, way more than terabytes but you know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah uh funny and in your case you know you've got like terra terra or whatever google abytes <laughs> and mine is more like bits the smallest one, you know, <laughs> not not bytes, but bits when it comes to remembering runs and stuff compared to your ability in harmony. Um, I had one other one for you. Um, what is it? How do you keep your voice in shape? Ah, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, well, it's, it's all about warming up. It's all about warming up. Like uh, when you wake up in the morning, it's not like it's like it's ready to go, you know, or um it's not like if i'm gonna do a, a show it's like my voice is like ready to go and do all these high notes it's you really have to warm it up you know it's kind of i mean i think uh you as a as a vocal teacher you you must tell your students that it's like a muscle it's kind of like a muscle right you got to stretch it out you got to warm it up and it's pretty much that I, I do a little process of um i have my own little scales you know i have i make up my little scales with riffs in it and i just repeat it and nice. and make it like you know step up and step up you know and go down and then um but what i usually do is i i sing the song over and over again uh -huh. uh, really lightly really oh, lightly oh my god i love what you're saying keep going sorry yeah, I'm yeah, you know? you see why because I'm you know what you tend to do is is like you go straight to the hardest part when you're warming up you you go to like the belting part right away and you start like trying to do that right away and sing in that register right away which is totally wrong i feel like that's how you develop nodules so what i like to do is i like to sing uh, the whole song until i get to the high parts and even the high parts i'm not going to belt it out right away i'm, I'm going to sing it in a way maybe if you know it depends it depends on my voice if it's too tired then i'll probably start with falsetto first but if not i'm going to start with this like um i don't even know how you call it but it's like when you kind of like pinch pinch your vocal cords together yeah. with 
Yeah, like kind of like. Remember it? But it's not falsetto. Exactly. It's not. It's. It's like a light instead of pushing full volume. Is that what you mean? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. So you're hitting right. the note, so, but you're not. Uh, like it's not like the stage yeah. way. Yeah. Exactly. What's important for me is like um, practicing also and making sure that I'm not flat. Not, not sharp and then while doing that it's like i'm warming it up to the point where i could finally belt it out you know and like maybe I'll, I'll sing the song maybe like four or five six times before really trying to belt it out you know oh i love it i love what you're saying man because there's, there's yeah. a big um thing where with teachers and students they think they're not sure like what warming up can be it doesn't have to be necessarily like a, a cd of scales or like mm -hmm. a predefined patterns it can be just singing, but mm -hmm. in in controlled ways, like you said, lightly switch it up to falsetto, which not everyone can do. You're lucky you can do that. Really, that's like <laughs> that's a talent in itself. But knowing knowing when to do that, you know, so that you don't overtire your voice. I love what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, I personally do like a um when I train my voice, I do like um like what you said, the scale riffs thing. But I actually, take songs like let's say I want to learn your kamustaka. You yeah. know, you know, like uh, let's say I want to learn like the the run in that that you do at the end. Of a, uh huh. Uh huh. Um, so I would take the falsetto that. Falsetto one. Yeah. Uh, no, not the falsetto. The when you go. Yeah. That the thing. <laughs> yeah. So like you let's say it. almost it sounds a bit different though. I don't fully have it, so I want to study it. But I would take it, and I would loop it. So I got like a program, like an app that loops it. Cool. And I would, um, yeah, then I would slow it down so that it's at my level of what I can hear clearly and execute clearly. And uh, then I would change the key. You can change the key on the program to an easy key. Wow. So, so I'll be like, and then I'll gradually work it up. So it's exactly like what you're describing, except, um, no, it is exactly what you're describing, except sometimes it might be more focused on a, a bit that like, I don't know how to do. So I might be trying to learn the actual notes or something. But the, yeah yeah that's so cool man i mean what's the app called uh i use amazing slowdowner um it's amazing slowdown yeah it looks like that amazing slowdowner it's on my website oh. i'll send it to you i'll send you all the stuff for it but um look i'll show you just a quick example of what i mean um so let's say where are we uh, songs yeah you bring it up <laughs> kamusta that's so cool. Yeah, it's really cool. It's actually completely revolutionized how I train um, over, over the yeah. years. Because um, back in the day, you would have to listen to the radio and record it on the cassette tape. Oh, uh, yeah. And find it, play it, learn it real quick. Okay, okay rewind it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Over and over, eh? Rewinding over and over. So this way, it's for when you can't figure out stuff on your own. You can slow it down and change the key so that it fits your voice so you can easily warm up instead of having to switch to falsetto or do the light pinch thing, like you said. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, so you can do like a scale type thing with it too. Yeah, yeah. So let's say I want to do that, so I can I can store it in loops. So I'll just store it, so it's in a loop now. So that is come, so cool. I'll come back to it, yeah. So now I'll just slow it down so I can hear it properly, and I'll just drop the key maybe two. Oh my gosh. Now I'll do it with it. What? That is awesome. No. No. So that's the beginning. So like I work yeah. it up sometimes in pieces. Mm-hmm. So then, so so that was a bit tricky that middle bit. So I would go over over that like maybe ten, twenty times, until I. That's exactly what I used to do. Yeah. With Brian McKnight, I used to learn like the first part, like first three notes of it real quick. Okay, master that, and then I'll add on to it. But with with the cassette tape, you know, it's like rewind. Yeah. Dude, it's wow. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's so, so cool. cool. How funny we learned this similar way, except you couldn't yeah, slow down yeah. on the cassette tape. Hey. No. You just no, have to listen to it yet. and pick it up. Yeah right yeah actually i think um 
I was able to back in the day, but I didn't realize that I could learn by slowing it down. Ah, okay. I should have done that before. Well, There was like to. a little speed, speed knob on it. Oh, yeah. no way. Well, you didn't yeah, need to. I, I didn't think of that, man. Maybe because you had your, the, you know, your, your, sis, your sister and people helping. You got to the level where you could pick stuff up without needing to slow down as much. I guess it probably yeah. would help though. If would I would have known that. <laughs> would help when you're listening to bloody boys to men runs and this super oh my gosh. fast things Wanye. It's like, and Brian's. <laughs> yeah. All this one years, man. Uh, they're doing just fine runs like this. Oh. Ah, I'm doing just fine. <laughs> like they're super fast, you know? Like yeah. and you slow it down. It's like, ah, I'm. It's like, I don't, I don't even know what's doing that until I slowed it down. It's like, is that what he's doing? He's so fast. Uh, it's freaky. Wanye is killing that. Killing. Yeah. They were out here for a while. They were with the divas. And they, yeah, um, I have to watch those videos. It's so cool. I love that they, they're they um, collaborating with Filipino artists like that. It's so inspiring. Yeah, that's really cool. Can yeah. we sing a little bit? Yeah, man. What's up? What's your mom? <laughs> What do you want to do? What do you think? Can you... Can you I'll ha harmonize with you. Oh, oh, we can't. I don't think we can harmonize because of the delay. Oh, really? That's the problem, yeah. Oh, no. Okay, okay, So okay. It, we have to like pass it back and forward. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. Yeah. What well, song like, do you like? Like, watch, let me show you what happens if we try to harmonize. Um, go try to harmonize. Uh, it still sounds good though. <laughs> it just comes in a little later. Like, you probably can't well, harmonize. Let's, let's try to do a back and forth and we'll try to harmonize. I just harmonize with JR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Um, I was I was hoping maybe like for fun you could you could help me with a like a line of bucket Baba or something like that. Ah, uh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, and then maybe we'll we could just that. jam with a. Um, yeah, let me let me bring up the the lyric. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just need that. Bucket It's gonna be harder Baba. for it if you don't. Yeah. Baba Alamka. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We can um, do the chorus. Yeah, this is the chorus because that's my weakest. So you can like okay, smash okay. me. That, you can those, be this tough those teacher. Those transitionings now. from yeah. um, from regular to uh, falsetto. That's it. Yeah. Let me bring up so I can get the key. Mm -hmm. oh, I haven't even warmed up yet. Ha, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's do your light method. Okay. From Nasaktan ko isang tulad mo na labis na nagma nag nagma nagma ma like that nagma ma ha yeah and Na then what I like to do is like these dips on it d d it kind of like goes oh, yeah? slide up to it d, yeah it goes d, up to it like that na, you know what I mean d na they they slide up Woo, to it yeah? slides yeah I love this. <laughs> this is I t try to teach it to my students. It's really hard doing the slides. It's really hard because it's so quick. Yeah, because they're two notes and they they like mesh together, right? Yeah. 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 D. Yeah. Yeah, you which, got that. Which like where am I? D. 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 Pansina. Pansina. See, there's like there's like slides in all of them. Pansina. Voila. So nice. That control, bro. All right, <laughs> let me try. Let me try. Yeah. Uh, Close up. Close up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. I'm so I'm dying. I'm dying. Sorry, bro. I don't want to fanboy too hard and oh, man. keep it You're professional. It, you oh, got it. You're your voice, that. though. Your voice. I can't focus now. <laughs> oh. Can you can you hear yeah. me with that line again, please, please? So, dina pansina walang katulad ng alay ng pagibig mo. Oh, all right. Do you start on falsetto for the katulad? It's on a cut. Oh, yeah, it's on a falsetto already. Ka 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 
Katularang alay ng pag-ibig mo. Yeah, and then see the end of the end of the vibrato has like a like a volume control in it. Ma, ma, you know what I mean? Soft. Softer. Yeah. <clears throat> ma, ah, ma. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's hard because uh, I'm doing the vibrato, know? but trying to drop the volume yeah. as well. Damn, yeah. levels. But that's see, hard. That, exactly that because there's like a cool texture of like it's like a breathy and it's like chopped up at the end of it, you know. So it's just like an extra texture on it. Oh, I yeah. love it! I love it! I'm getting a singing <laughs> lesson, from JR. All right, again, again. Okay. So the ano katulad ng ng pagibig mo pa katulad ng ng pagi. How do you say the ing? Pag-ibig mo the, After the alay, you say, is it ng? Katulad ng alay ng pag-ibig Ng, like that? Ah. Oh, with the pag-ibig with the G in it. <clears throat> pag-ibig. Pa- Katulad ng alay ng pag-i- pag-ibig mo Oh! <laughs> Damn! It's hard. Oh, I'm, I'm really That's focusing. That's why you though, because you got it like in two two tries. Uh, try. No, 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 no. My, my falsetto is so crackly, though, bro. Did Did it's, you ever have that issue? I, I try to do it. I try to I try to emulate that mm. that crackly sound. You know? Oh no, no. I mean, yeah. your falsetto feels like it cuts like a knife. Like it sounds like so so thick. The sound. I feel like mine. It's gotten better over the last two years where I really focused on it, but I feel like it's almost like, it feels like it's gonna crack apart easier or something. What is it, too much air or something? Or? Maybe, yeah. Do you, do you control, do you think about that when you do it or? Yeah, I try to throw in a, as much air as I can. Oh, on purpose. <laughs> so yeah, that's you yeah. trying to do it airy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Damn, it might just be the vocal yeah. tone. Might just be the difference in yeah, our tones. Definitely a vocal tone, yeah. yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah, see your quality. It's it's <clears throat> it's like we're singing the same notes, right? But the quality of it's totally different. Yeah, and it's nice though. It's really open and it's it's big and broad. You know, airy. Mm. So it's real smooth. I mean, I like it. It's, Thank it's you, a man. good tone. And I'm yeah. really I'm really noticing the difficulty because it's on one breath too that phrase yeah yeah. it's like i'm really trying to like oh get the air like still happening at the (laughs) end of the phrase while controlling the vibrato and the volume lowering like you said to do yeah right right i love it all right can you show me like a high bit okay you Um, you don't have to do it if you don't want to sing it so then you can go then we can do that same part just in chess voice yeah okay yeah yeah good idea So I do. I'm doing a lot of that. Whoa, the pinch, that pinch thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah the warm, yeah. warming up into it. Pretty it's perfect, much, yeah. but it sounds but, like beast, like that, <laughs> to me. You know, that's pretty much my. Um, that's how I execute it, though. I have that pinch in it all the time. Like all my my loud belting, it always has that. Yes. I mean, yeah. you can see it in my throat. It kind of like stretching. You know what I mean? I yeah, I mean, I don't even know if that's the wrong way of singing, but it's perfect. It's amazing. No, I don't. I don't criticize singers that sound amazing. I'm not <laughs> that kind of teacher. Like you sound amazing, so what you're doing is right. That's it to me, you know. Um, because even the most amazing singers, they they get hurt um, from just overdoing, like over singing. It's just you know, yeah. your voice has a limit, you know. Right. Before you can get like it's like RSI or something, you know, everyone has a limit. So, right. but but some teachers try to say, oh, that you're singing wrong. You sing wrong. So I do I do believe you can sing wrong, but you're you're controlling it, right there. That's that's the control method, and I know exactly what you're talking about because I had the problem where I crack so often, and I realized mm. I wasn't doing what you're doing. Like a while, like from a, a two three years back, I was like, someone, this amazing singer, very similar to you. He said to me at, at karaoke, he goes. Man, he came up. He he went serious on me because he's like a goofy guy, but he's an incredible singer. He hugged me and he goes, "Your voice is so good now." Because he's seen me over the years get better, and he's like, Uh "You just got to get one thing down. You got to stop cracking." Mm. And he just he just made it 
he etched Straight it in up. my mind, you know, and he was serious, like he wanted it for me, you know. So I was yeah. like, he's right. Like I got to like stop learning, learn to to like reduce that from happening. And the method you said is exactly what I did. That pinch thing. I think a lot. What's happening is when um, upcoming artists, upcoming singers mm. watch professionals belt. Their first reaction is to yell it out, mm. which is great training too. But it's like after you learn how to yell out and hit those notes, it's like you have to learn how to control it now because you get fatigue if you yeah. just keep doing that. That's when you start cracking. Yeah, it's like yelling right? at a club, and then you leave yeah, and exactly. you're like. <laughs> exactly right you're yelling exactly. at the club you're not controlling it you know yes unless you're yes. walking up to people's ears and you're like yeah so i'm gonna talk like this in the club. <laughs> yeah, you, want me, you want me to teach you some uh some singing baby <laughs> yeah i'm gonna teach you something <laughs> <laughs> all right let me try hit this <laughs> oh that's a hard bit there is that it yep oh oh that sounds good <laughs> like that mm -hmm. all right quickly yeah that's hey that's easy for you no 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 it's it's different when you're doing it slower so fast okay. is like it's like a it's different. yeah it's hard to do it fast <laughs> maybe with some warm-ups good it's okay yeah right I work on it okay. it's really thank you man you, you know a big thing for me was hanging out with singers that were better than me and hearing them and it it outlined for me the things i needed to work on even without them having to tell me oh my so goodness i love hearing you do it better than me like right in person because i can be like I can hear the thing that I'm not noticing because it's like, the f it's like immediate feedback. Even though you're not saying it with words, uh -huh, you're uh -huh. you're showing me with the action. Like this is what it's supposed to sound like, bro. Right? It's about that Copy collaboration. <laughs> Man, when I'm singing with Daryl Ong, I'm like, oh. dude, I'm intimidated, man. When I'm the singing power, with Jason. Right? Yeah, it's like these guys, man. They're like they're coming up with new stuff. They're changing the game, and it's like, I love it. Yeah. You know, I'm learning from them too, and. They got just like flair. you said, you know, you love singing with with other people and and learning from them. It's it's the same for me. Yeah, it's amazing to hear you say that. Like, like as in it shows like no matter what level you are, you're always feeling like that, and it's nice. It never ends oh, yeah, the learning sure. process. Yeah, man, Daryl is crazy. That boy, that boy, <laughs> he's always making my my goosebumps yeah. go up, man. Yeah, that's mad. That's so mad. He freaked yeah. me out shout when out, I watched. Shout out to Daryl. Yeah, Daryl. What um, would you watch? <clears throat> Pardon. Oh yeah, when well, she's thinking out loud, I was like, "Damn, this boy's creative!" Oh yeah, he changes. Yeah. Like, how does he find these notes? It's like, how come I didn't think of that? That's, that's a good <laughs> how come one. I didn't think of that? <laughs> the, think of that one. the immediate, the, the primal, the primal envy emotion yeah, <laughs> it just right. comes right, and then you got to be like, "Hey man, be cool, appreciate yeah, yeah, yeah. it." <laughs> cool, you learn it, learn that. You know, you yeah. couldn't think Damn of that learn guy. it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and he's such a humble guy, man. I love that. You know, it's like. Yeah. He doesn't get to his head and he's just there to, to make good music and work and just be a good humble person i love yeah. that yeah all right man let's jam can we jam a little bit we got a little bit more time just let's sing now let's do it yeah let's do um <clears throat> can we do back at one let's do back at one yeah let's go you want to start you, you started off <laughs> all right i don't start any key whatever whatever comes to mind yeah any key yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's undeniable that we should be together It's unbelievable How I used to say that I fall never The faces I need to know If you don't know just how I feel Then let me show you now that I'm for real if all things in time, time will reveal Yeah One You're like a dream come true Two uh, Just wanna be with you Three uh, yeah, okay. Girl, it's plain to see that you're the only one for me yeah. Four 
repeat steps one through three five make you fall in love with me if ever i believe my work is done okay here comes the harmony then i'll stop back at one <laughs> Say <laughs> farewell to the dark night. I see the coming of the sun. It's getting high now. Yeah, falsetto. I if you feel want. like a little child whose life has just begun. You came and breathed a new life into this lonely heart of mine. Ooh. You threw both the lifeline just in the nick of time. <laughs> yeah. You're like a dream come true, too. Just want to be with you. Three. You'll explain to see you're the only one for me. Um, um. Four, repeat steps one through three, go. Five, gonna make you fall in love with me. If ever I believe my work is done, done, then I'll start back at one. Yeah. Damn session, boy. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't done that in a while, dude. That's, that's fun, dude. Nice. That. All right, you ready? Yeah. Ready? Okay, go. Surprise. We don't even talk anymore. Okay. Uh, we don't even know what we argue about. Don't even say I love you no more. <laughs> Saying how you feel is no longer alive. Some people will work things out and some just don't know how to change let's don't wait till the water runs dry we might watch our own lives pass us by go let's don't wait till the water runs dry we'll make the biggest mistake of our lives don't, Don't do it, baby. baby. Ooh. Never. Stop it, bro. That no. <laughs> oh, killing me. Do the Sean bit. Do the next Sean bit. Um. No. Now they can see the tears in our eyes. The 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 thing that lies deep in our hearts. Oh, deep in our hearts. And the, oh, Maybe that's that a thing we can. Cause everybody knows that we're both torn apart. Yeah. Why do we hurt each other? You do this bit. Why do we push love away? Let's don't wait till Angel. the water runs dry. Adlib, oh, you're the Adlib. No way. Watch our own oh, pass us by. Let's don't wait till the water runs dry. Dry. We'll make the, make biggest, the biggest mistake of our lives. Don't, Don't do, do it, it baby. baby. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. <laughs> All right, you hit me with one. Session. Okay. Um. Let's see. Hold on. There was one run in there. The... No. Remember that one? Yeah, that's what I was trying to do earlier. Do it. Do it. Do it. Uh. La 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 la. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> that's beautiful, bro. Right. That's beautiful. Wow. All right, you pick one. Nice. Like that. That's beautiful. <laughs> you made it. You made it more complex. <laughs> yeah. Trying to JR fight it. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. That's a good it. one. Mm, let's see. Boys to Man, Brian. Who else did we hit? Oh. Cisco, Drew Hill. No, uh, oh, do you know Beauty? Took a uh, long drink. 
Tuesday, we were making love on Wednesday, and on Thursday and Friday, Saturday, we chilled on Sunday. On my way to see my friends who lived a couple blocks away from me, I, as I walked through uh. the subway, must have been about quarter past three. In front of me was a beautiful money with a beautiful body. Oh, and then she asked me for the time. I said, I cast her name, she did your number, and a date meets my Roman nine. Did she decline? No. Didn't she mind? I don't think, I don't so. think so. Was it for real? real? Damn sure. What was the deal? <laughs> <laughs> so was she keen, she could wait. Cinnamon Queen, let me update. Oh, what did she say? She said she loved to rendezvous. She asked me what we were gonna do. So I stopped, but about love more. I fought to Monday. <laughs> Took a day on Tuesday. We were making love on Wednesday. And my Thursday and Friday, Saturday, we chilled on Sunday. Met this girl on. Monday, yeah. took her for a drink on Tuesday. We were making love on Wednesday, and on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we chilled on Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Since <laughs> I met this special lady, who, yeah, oh, I can't get her off my mind. She's one of a kind. And I ain't about to deny it. It's a special kind of thing with you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Say I that I met this girl on Monday. Oh, you're going to improvise for me, Jay. <laughs> I took her for a drink on Tuesday. We were making love on Wednesday and on Thursday. Friday and Saturday. Are you going to change it up? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. What do you call this segment of yours? You got to call this something like a jam out or this I don't is know. so good. Are you having yeah, fun? Yeah. Yeah, man. This is cool. Bro, you gave me way more time than I expected. I'm so <laughs> lucky. I can tell you having fun there. <laughs> is this on like live right now? No, like, live, no, live? no, no. It's just recording okay, on my okay. computer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> is this sure. on live? This guy asked. I know, right? Ask now. <laughs> is this on live? <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, Bakit Baba. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Go. Let's do Bakit Baba. So. Um, Wait, let me start because I know the I know a little bit of the beginning. Okay, cool. but give me the key. They want me. So Nagpapa Alam Ka Nagpapa Alam Ka Dahil nasaktan kita Nooy di makitang mali ako Ngayon alam ko na Sa'yo'y nakasala Sana muli Ako'y mapatawad pa. So beautiful. Araw-araw uh, kang lumuluha Sa akin ay nagmamakaawa Nuhuy no, din na rin ipagsama mo oh, oh. Wait, I want to do a change. I love that bit. I got to change. Do you like it? Okay, go. No, 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 uh-huh. Let's harmonize this next part. <laughs> what am I doing? I'll do the lead. Yeah, yeah. Di na pansin na wala katulad ang alay na pagibig mo sa akin ako sa namulip. 
I love that. So nice. So <laughs> nice. So the harmony's coming like a little delayed in my ear. So it's like it's oh, okay, like okay. when we're not yeah. holding a note, it's, it, it might sound a bit funny. No, you killed it. I messed it up because I don't yeah. know the flow of the. I learned the first part of the chorus and I didn't learn the second half because like, <laughs> I did a thing where we'll I was trying to. We'll harmonize the first half of it next then. <laughs> so second verse. Here's the second verse. All right, hit it. Kreta <laughs> galakon. Bulag sa katulad mo Kayong wakas Yaring pag-ibig mo Oh Iniwan pa kita Laging nag-isa Bakit pa nakawa Ito sa'yo I think I made it higher. Yeah! Araw-araw Kang lumuluha sa akin ay nagmamakaawa Noong iyo ay di narinig pagsamo mo Bakit ba nakawa Nang saktan ko isang tulad mo na nagbisis na nagma Mahal, <laughs> hindi na pansin na wala ang katulad ng alam ng pagibig mo sa akin. <laughs> Oh, I'm in heaven, bro. <laughs> I'm one of the chords. You did, yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit of chromaticism there. I loved it. <laughs> Killer. Yeah, man. Thank you, bro. That was really My fun, pleasure. man. My pleasure. Thank you. I had fun really as fun. well. Your heaps chatty. What's that? Your heaps chatty. I loved it. <laughs> I talk a lot, man. I loved it. Because you know, <laughs> you know, you don't know. Like you might ask someone a question, and you might be like, "Oh, you know that maybe they don't want to answer it, or it's like you know, give you just a sentence." One word answer. But you're like answered all my questions before I asked you one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we would have talked more actually at um, in Sydney at the show. It's just it was a little bit loud, you know. You had to yeah. leave already too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you had your concert. You had your, you had your next gig the next day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, you know, there was yeah. like a line and stuff. But I mean, I was happy had more that time, you just it probably knew me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you look familiar, man. <laughs> I, I see know you. Where you from? <laughs> I mean, oh shoot, that's right, Coach. What's up, man? That I was, was like, cool. oh man, I'm yeah. getting a hug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mika was like, hey, isn't that? That's 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 someone. How, how do we know that guy? I was like, I know, who is that guy? <laughs> it's Rashad. Doesn't that point you out first? Yeah, it's Rashad yeah, going to Jr. <laughs> Jr. <laughs> Jr. Where are you going? Yep, yep. I'm going to say Jr. Uh, <laughs> Jr. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I thought of that little bit before going to say. I was like, what, what can I say for my intro? Okay, Jr. Awesome. would be. A- JR would be a good one. <laughs> I was cracking up. I was like, this is not only like one of the greatest R&B artists I've ever heard, but it's also a comedy show. It was so good. Yeah, man. That's, that's how we are in the Philippines. Dude. There's so many entertainers out here that are super hilarious. And I kind of gravitated towards that when I when I got out here. It's kind of culture out here, you know. Ogi al Kasir and these Jano Gibbs and the, the, there's, there's so many people out here. Martin Rivera, I mean, it's so much more incorporated in their show just than just singing, you know? Yeah. And they're killing it. And th- these guys are my idols. So I try to emulate them. Nice. That's awesome, man. Yeah. It's been so nice talking to you. Thanks so much. Likewise. Likewise. I really enjoyed it. So it's okay for What's me to up? put this video on my channel? Of course, man. Yeah. Of course. Um, all, right. all right, man. Hey, do you know, do you know the artist Tank? Yes, I know Tang. Yeah, yeah. I was just yeah. wondering if you knew, because he's one of my, fa- him and Wanye are like my two favorites. So I was just curious if you really? listen to his. That's like um, R&B standard right there, Tank. R&B standard. Right? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up with these terms. Well, he calls himself the general. Oh, he's, yeah. right? That's the I'm general like, standard right there. Tank's the general. JR's the king. <laughs> Who was the prince? Is Chris the prince? Chris, Chris he, he picked up the prince of R&B he out here. Yep. Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, man, you gotta meet you gotta meet my brother too. My brother's an amazing R and B singer. 
Right, right. You said he plays the guitar very well too. Karim. Um, yeah, we play. He plays instruments too. But he's he's you when you talk, you just reminded me so much of him because he's like, um, he's a producer as well, and he does. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, he does like incredible vocals, like incredible lines. He comes up with really creative stuff. So it just reminds me a lot of you. It'd be cool, so cool if we could like do some kind of nice collab between all of us, like a sort of a mixed production video collab. Or let's something. do maybe, it. Maybe. You know, that was my first idea, right? Yes. Let's do like a collab on a song. Yes, it's just you know how how everyone's doing their thing. It's it's hard to get it all organized, but, but all in good time. Yeah, exactly, man. It's exciting. For sure. All right. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jao. Lovely to meet you. Thank you. Likewise, you man. Time. I'll see you again soon, huh? Yeah. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.